So much of gold prospecting is about leaving the known for the unknown. I'm just walking into my spot. I see this sitting on the ground. Huh. That's almost complete. You never know where gold nuggets are hiding, and if you don't explore, you won't find them. Yeah, that's a little nugget. <laughs> this week was the perfect example of doing just that. That is wicked, man. That's got to be at least like a third of a gram there. What I'm taking in today is not only remote and hard to get to, but it's incredibly interesting. <laughs> it's a hard rock gold mine that has been bringing gold to the surface through quartz veins, but it's got a creek that runs through it that's being worked as an alluvial gold deposit. Now I've detected this area and I haven't found a single thing. And right below it, you can see water races that go down to the creek. Hard rock mines don't generally have um water races like that. The smart money would be on detecting, but the easy money is panning in the creek because that creek is going to be concentrating any gold that's shedding out of this hard rock mine. This is where I've been working this morning. I've cleared all the overburden off this patch. We're down to a clay slash bedrock layer. And that is the gold that I've got so far for about two hours this morning. And oh yeah, yeah, that's a little nugget. That came out of right there. This is a piece of bedrock, and that's a piece of bedrock. See all the gravel jam packed up in the corner of where the bedrock in the bedrock is? That's where El Succo is gonna come in handy. This either seems to be you get a whole bunch of stuff or you get nothing at all. So we'll see, that nugget's encouraging. This is a totally new area, so I'm still figuring it out. It seems to be super sporadic gold. You either get like a couple little nano dots, or you get little flakes. Oh, like that. We got two nice bits. One, two. One little speck, one almost picker, and then another nice flake. And that's really indicative of hard rock areas when you crush ore. You either get like tiny, tiny little bits of flower gold, or you get a nugget. I think this spot has a lot of future potential. That's a rock. That's not bedrock. That's a rock. Oh, now it makes sense. I thought that was bedrock, but it was just a big old boulder. No one's touched this area in a long time. I'm expecting that there is going to be some, like, legit nuggets out here. If I manage to get two pans in a row with gold, it'll be the first time today that that's happened. Yeah, we got gold. Is it big gold? Certainly not big gold, but still gold. We got heaps of really fine pieces in there. Okay, they're not boulders. They are pieces of bedrock, but they're fractured because I just got another one up and sitting in between them is this clay. Look at that. That looks really good. It's a very common question whether or not clay is worth working. And I've got two answers for it. The first answer is usually Clay is an impermeable layer to gold, so most gold will sit in the top one to two centimeters or the top inch of that clay. Work that and leave the rest. A lot of rock in this clay. But to be 100% sure that the clay doesn't contain any gold, take at least one pan, completely break it down and see what's in it. If it's not a significant amount of gold, then I wouldn't worry too much about it. I'm hopeful because that nugget that I found earlier was in clay like that. So maybe, ah, oh, yeah. One, two nice little flakies. These pieces of gold are really good size. This creek has a lot of potential. I am, I'm gonna spend a lot of time here. Every pan I'm doing, nice little flakes and whole bunch of micro. These pieces have good size too, so the way up might be okay. On days where I'm just prospecting, I don't use a classifier because you don't know if there's nuggets and the easiest way to throw a nugget away is to get it caught in your classifier. So you don't use one, you just scrape the big rocks out with your fingers and you won't throw any nuggets away. If we know we got gold on the bedrock here, if we come down, we can still see bedrock in this old sluice box. That's what this little channel is here, poor man's sluice. So I'm gonna follow this sloping bit of bedrock in and take a sample out of the bottom here because the gold's only got one place to go.
We should see gold in this because we've got gold directly above it, and that narrow channel doesn't allow the gold to go anywhere else but through it. At least, that's the theory. But, like, what the f would I know? Shoop! Any boogers? Oh, yeah! <laughs> that's the best pan of the day! Look at that! Clearly, the nugget was the best pan of the day, but I didn't get that on film, so it doesn't count. Where is that? That's gold I can see. Look at those coarse little bits. Hell yeah, bro! The old timers used to blast sluice boxes into the bedrock, and it makes perfect sense that you'd have one right out the front of a hard rock mine so you could do all your processing in one spot. Oh, man, back! Oh. Hopefully, this pan's as good. If it's not, oh well. <laughs> The bedrock underneath that chute is all fractured, which means that we've got little like sluice riffles working for us. Hopefully, they're catching more than just what we got. Oh yeah, look at that. That's about the same amount. Heaps of micro flower gold, and then a couple of nicer pieces. Look at that. And that is why we like concentrators. These are the two best pans I've had today for spec count. With the day getting late, I spent the next hour looking for bedrock that I could pull gold from. Whilst this was a fantastic panning session, I had a few more spots I needed to check out later that week, and I was running out of daylight. This is definitely the last pan of the day with the way my old man back's feeling. Oh yeah? Yeah! I'll take it. Few little micro dots and then Bam! Oh yeah, baby. A nugget. Wow, a bogus nugget. This is what we got for the day. This is the results from just a couple of hours of test panning. And I am pretty excited about this new spot. I reckon there is going to be some very nice gold hiding up in this hill. Tony, I heard you had the best day at daycare and you played with a dog named Keith. So much so that you both laid in the ground on the mud, and that's why you had to get a bath. Unfortunately, there was no time to discuss Keith, because Gadzi called, and he says that he'd found a possible 1900s <laughs> mining camp. Show me your flute. Oh, it is. That is super cool. Show us the holes. Look at that. I'm calling that a flute. We're calling yeah, that a flute. It's a flute. It's a little Irishman's flute. That was the worst rave I've ever been to. Gadzi found this area because of this thing. That, not my dog, the thing she's standing on. It's very difficult to show you a 3D shape on camera, but we have one wall here, a back wall, and then another wall here. This is a fireplace. The miners needed fire on the gold fields primarily to fix tools and create things that they needed to create to go mining. Always look out for these in the bush, and if you do find them, detect for relics, because you never know, you might dig up a gold sovereign. But before looking for rusty nails and old spoons, we hit their waste rock piles to see if they'd thrown out any gold specimens while they were working. Fern took us all the way up this bastardly hill to this huge fallen gum tree, and that sexy looking mine. On the ground, as you can see, there is nothing but quartz. And if you've followed my channel for more than 30 seconds, you'll know that quartz holds gold. That is the single biggest piece of gold that I have pulled out detecting. And I've been here for 30 seconds and I've got a piece of quartz that goes, oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. oh, oh Can you see any gold? Maybe there. <laughs> Trying to get rid of all the fluffy, loose, horrible stuff so we have a cleaner place to scrape back. Nope. There we go. That is, I reckon, a very old, rusted piece of iron. Apparently, my accuracy on the magnet is pretty crappy. <laughs> Old Fernster down there is going to tell you that I've been dealing with non-stop ground noise and false signals, but finally, it looks like i got a real one. This mullet pile is brutal. There is false signals all over it because of that wet, sticky soil. It's just full of iron. So if I do a quick ground balance, now listen to this. Well, that can only be one of two things. That or that. Uh-uh. Nope. That one? That I clearly hit with my pick? Oh, baby. Oh, God. Look at it! Look at it! Ah! 
Gadzi, Mick and I have a rule. Don't peek early. If you peek early, you'll be skunked for the rest of the day. And that seems to be exactly what happened to me here. Ooh, it's been a minute. I haven't found anything other than rusty nuggets. Because after those two specimens, it was non-stop junk and false signals. Two specimens right off the bat, followed by a bazillion big nails and bits of rusty nuggets. But that's detecting for you. You're either on it or you're very off it. Realizing that I'd peaked way too early, I decided to unpack the Equinox 600 and see if we couldn't find any relics down by the camp. There is a lot of junk in this area giving me like little tiny signals and I'm just trying to find signals that give nice solid repeatable targets and this is finally one of them. So we're going to dig that up. Try not to hit it. <laughs> that would be great. There is a massive difference between a machine dedicated to gold prospecting and a machine dedicated to relic hunting. I actually think it's still in the hole. Yeah. The primary difference is target ID and discrimination. Hunting for relics Yuck. with a gold machine is fraught with difficulty because they're extremely sensitive and you'll be picking up every tiny little scrap of metal, whereas a relic machine is designed so that you have an idea of what's actually under your coil before you dig it. Well, it feels like 45 years later, it's right here somewhere. No, nah, it's this. I think that might be a buckle. That looks like a buckle. I need a stick. Yeah, I'd say that's a buckle. That is 100% someone's buckle. It's pretty fragile on this side. Obviously that's the face because you can see the tongue. Now I can hold my pants up. <laughs> Found something kind of cool. Solid 18 on the Equinox. I dare say Pioneer Paulie will be bloody proud of me. Ho 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 ho! It's a spoon, baby! Yeah! Sometimes spoons have hallmarks, and I think there's a set of hallmarks right there, which means that we should, if they're still in OK Nick, be able to identify where this spoon came from. Because often they came from places like hotels and pubs, where the miners would steal them and then come to their camp. I found one from the same pub that Ned Kelly used to visit. Nike a Spoonston! Mmm, rice! Relic hunting, just like gold prospecting, is all about covering ground. We spent all our time grid searching back and forth with two metal detectors to see what else was lost at the camp. Ah, it's a thing! Ah, oh, yeah, that looks like it used to hold together a piece of leather or something. If you know what that is, let me know in the comments, but I'm fairly sure it's a rivet for, like, leather work. Gazzy, are you able to hold up your pants now? Oh my word! Yes, you are, actually. That's a perfect picture frame. I literally have just been walking along one of the water races here. Spotted another really nice piece of porcelain. What do we have, the Spoonston? Oh, wow. I don't know what that is. That is really cool. Like, that's weird. It's got grooves and obviously a circle with nothing on the inside. I reckon if you collect enough of them, you could probably summon a dragon. But as usual, the day got late and we had to head home. Well, unfortunately, it's getting dark and we have quite the hike to get back out. So for today, we're going to have to call it quits. But I think it's been quite a successful day. Two gold specimens and a whole heap of very interesting relics. Today is going to be a good day. I woke up knowing that I was going to get a tattoo and I checked my mailbox and got one free pizza from Domino's. Definitely not any kind of advertisement for Domino's. This is just that um, I love pizza and apparently they stuffed up and sent me a free one. Oh, I always stick my keys in my pocket when I do my belt up. Leroy Reverskins. Grab that ID. I forgot my iced coffee. Mmm, delicious. Clearly, tattoos are not for everyone. If you see a tattooed person and you don't agree with that choice, it's their choice for their body, and I think that you should respect their choice to do that. Everyone should be free to make their own mistakes. Four hours of needles in my arms later, and I hit a local creek with Mick. We gotta make this as difficult as possible, don't we? With absolutely no intention of filming. We literally just finished setting up the fluid bed sluice. Mick comes over here, digs out from behind that rock, puts the shovel on the bed, and that pops out. Second scoop. <laughs> yeah! And I was like, well, I gotta get that on film because that's such a cool little find. The very next pan after Mick finds that. <laughs> oh, look at what I found! Mick, 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 look. You got one! <laughs> yes! 
Yes. Ah! That's just as good. Not one, but two nuggets in a row. <laughs> Holy crap. See, Mick's hole's just that little bit smaller. I don't have the same problem. There we go. Fernie, six years of full-time prospecting and that has never happened. I have never had one person get a nugget, then the next person get a nugget in the very next pan. My pan's floating away. This is the spot I'm working. We have a beautiful bedrock bar, and as you can see, it's full of cracks and crevices. And this creek literally just finished flooding for a straight week. So we know there's new fresh gold deposits in here. My nugget came from just on the backside of that broken bedrock. So we're gonna now yabby pump it along there, hopefully pull out more gold. Normally I wouldn't be so concerned about checking my classifier in some of the other places I go, but uh, today quite clearly I'm going to have to. I've had a couple of good pans from here, like five or six nice little coarse pieces, but not like that last one ever. So I've got my fingers really crossed quite hard right now. <laughs> I started using my steel gold pan again because it makes you slow down a little bit, really focus on your technique and it's bloody enjoyable. The chances there being three gold nuggets in a row are pretty much zero. So let's just... <laughs> There's two! Two in that pan! Ah! Yeah, boy! Yeah! <laughs> Same tight, same tight, it's all... What the hell? I don't remember sacrificing a chicken anytime recently, but damn! I was going to do just one pan for you today to show you this spot, but we're doing another one! We're doing another one! Mick being the genius that he is, this is our bedrock bar that I pulled those nuggets out from just there, but that bar deviates this way straight across the creek directly to where Mick found his nugget. And just like any good European, I am panning all my tailings directly on top of where our pay channel is. <laughs> Big brain, Mick. Big brain. Mm -hmm. Yeet! That is gold, for sure. Right there. Oh yeah, look at it shining. Yep, that's 100% a piece of gold. Where's my snuffer bottle? There. Yeah! It's got him. Pioneer Pauly, eat your snuffer bottle out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so eventually all the specs are nuggets. Look at the black sand starting to form in the corners. I reckon this is going to be good. The closer we get to the bank, the more black sand we're getting. I reckon this, this will be the pan I get skunked on because <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> if this is pan number three in a row with nuggets, Oh, come on, baby. Let's see what we got. We've got chunky black sand. We've got some nice looking specks. And a nugget. <laughs> <laughs> what the damn hell? Oh, my God. That's three for three. Look at that pan. It is a rare day in hell that I get that much gold in one pan. If you're a longtime supporter and follower of the channel, you'll know I'll get excited over nano dots. So this is something else. Come here, gobble guts. You got work to do. Whilst I was having a great day, mixed day was going just as well. Show us the gold, Mick. Whoa, whoa. Hey, there's some. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> how many golds is he going to get, Fernie? I'd almost argue that it doesn't really matter how much gold you get with this because that nugget just... <laughs> takes, yeah, 
<laughs> it's done it. You have 100% been prospecting too because there's at least a dozen shotgun pellets in there. The rule is if you don't find a shotgun pellet, you haven't worked hard enough at prospecting. Come on, baby. Yeah. Show us. Oh, yes. Say what you want about fluid beds. They work pretty well. Look at how much fine gold's in there. <laughs> you only put like five or so pans through that too, yeah, didn't you? About five pans I did. They are nice bits too. See all that? That's a thunderstorm rolling in. Before that happens, we're going to process the ore that I found detecting at the start of the week. And after the success I had using fire last time processing ore, I'm going to do that again. First I need some kindling. <laughs> God, I love blow torches. Oh. I've had that little hatchet for 18 years. 18 years. <laughs> Rest in pieces, hatchet. Rest in pieces. The whole idea of this is to superheat the ore. We're gonna put all the ore into this steel pan, get it really hot, and then quench it. If you haven't seen the episode where I did this, I'll link it above. Now the other purpose of doing a fire is I need to re-season this pan because you can see the rust and those silver parts, it makes it really hard to see fine gold. So if we put this on the fire, it'll give it back some of its contrast. Now obviously this is going to be stupidly hot so we're just going to put it over on the rocks because we do not want to quench the pan. I can just cool off. The heat is definitely working. That is a nice fracture on the biggest piece of quartz. <sighs> Three, two, one, turn away. Now in theory, that's gonna be a lot easier to break up because quartz in general, when you're trying to beat it to death with Stampy is quite hard. Let's see how breakable it actually is. Oh yes, look at that, brittle as. Could do it by my hand. If it wasn't raining, I'd set this thing up and then we could be done in about 10 seconds, but we're going to do this the manual way. Here's how this is going to work. Start with the biggest one. As you might be able to tell, this is taking, this is taking a while. So even though I'm gonna get like real wet doing this and it might make a sticky horrible mess, we're turning, we're turning the RC1 on. a lot quicker than doing that by hand. Way quicker. That took it down really well, really fast. So we are gonna go ahead and pan that down. See how much gold was hiding in those specimens I found at the start of the week. Le bubbles. Starting to get down to where the heavies are now. Most of that is going to be steel from the fire coming off the pan that I cooked the ore in. But some of it will also be the heavies that are associated with the ore in my area, such as galena, which is a lead silver mix. Now, oddly, I'm not seeing any fine gold come out in the corners, and normally you'd be seeing it by now, so that has me slightly worried. Perhaps we just picked up hot rocks and we're not going to see any gold at all. Moment of tooth. Normally, we would have seen gold by now. I haven't seen any. I don't know what's going to be in this pan. I'm freaking out a little bit. <laughs> Come on, let there be some gold. Let there be some gold. Oh, yes. Yes, I can see the gold. Okay, that that's a relief. Yeah! <laughs> 
They're nice bits, but hardly any fine gold. But those are solid pieces. That is a fantastic find. Clearly, we're going to have to go back to that mine dump and look for more. What's got me super surprised is the distinct lack of fine gold. Normally, I see a lot more fine gold than that. So much so that the majority of the weight from most ore crashes I do is from fine gold. But clearly, in this case, it's nugget or nothing gold. This is the total gold I got for around 18 hours of prospecting across three days. Between metal detecting and panning, I managed to find a small hoard of gold. I'm gonna get that all cleaned up and on the scales. But before I can weigh it up, I gotta get rid of all the impurities, and that means hitting the smelter. Except for these little nuggets, they get to live. But all of this, all of that's getting melted down. That's one spectacular looking nugget. What I think is really interesting is you can tell these two nuggets come from completely different areas. They're different colours. The big nugget comes from New South Wales and the small nugget there comes from Victoria. That little dancing flame usually tells you you're about at temp. Oh, that poured way better. In fact, I can even see the bead of gold this time. That is a healthy looking bead of gold. go. For my area, that is an incredibly successful week. We're going to find out how much all these pieces weigh. I'm going to weigh the big blob first. I'd like to think this is maybe half a gram. Whoa, 0.74? And then I'm going to do my nice big flat nugget. I'm going to guess a third of a gram, 0 0.3. 0 0.17, okay, over and under my guesses. But now all together, let's go for two grams. That's ambitious, but we're going to try. 1.26. That's worth $102.92 Australian at the time of recording. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please give your dog a big scratch behind the ears for me. Peace, and I'm out.